In England, when you want to take over a football club, you have to go through this thing called the fit and proper test. This is essentially a test by the English FA to make sure that you have no criminal racket, no financial wrongdoings, or any cases of fraud. This is essentially a background check to make sure that you are capable of handling the day-to-day tasks of a football club owner. Unfortunately, this test is not watertight, as with anything to do with the English FA, and a lot of not-fit-for-purpose owners have gone through the cracks. Barry are the biggest casualty of this ceasing to exist anymore, and the likes of Bolton, Wigan, Derby, they've all had very incapable owners over the last few years and today we are here to talk about another such club we are talking players and staff not being paid on multiple occasions unpaid tax bills multiple winding up orders transfer embargoes almost every half year from the number one fan supporters group having to do a gofundme to make sure that the debts are paid off and the players are paid we are talking about south end united Hello everyone, my name is Samuel, welcome back to the channel, and if this is your first time here, hi, nice to meet you all. And yeah, it's been a while since I uploaded, that's mainly because over the last couple of weeks, I was in Thailand competing in a Formula Student Tournament, and it was a pretty taxing and fun adventure, our team came fourth, first in EVs, which was the category we are competing in, and didn't really get to do any research during that time, so most of the reading I've done are after I came back, which is like the second day of March. And I have to thank a lot, uh, my buddy from Twitter, Drew, he basically supplied me with endless South End United stuff because I asked him to get me started on this research and he did more than enough. He really did me a favor there, so I have a starting point for this. And if you like this type of content, a docu-series type of thing I want to do, do give it a like, click subscribe, turn on the post notifications, all that good stuff. And yeah, let's get right into the video. South End United and their home ground Roots Hall were bought by property developer Ron Martins for £4 million back in November of 1998, and in his first season in charge of the club, they finished 18th in the 4th tier of English football, or Division 3 as they like to call back in the day. And it's not really significant compared to what we're going to discuss in this video, but it's important to mention this because if you score one place up on the table, you're going to find Brighton. And guess who finished first in that table? Brentford. Yeah, that same Brighton and Brentford. Moreover, there were also Cardiff and Swansea in and around the top, two established championship clubs with good Premier League stints for either side. So it's really interesting to see the difference in trajectories these two clubs have gone over the last 25 years. But back to the point, this tenure under Ron Martin started off really well, with back-to-back -back promotions between 2004 and 2006 landed them from League 2 all the way to the Championship, the second tier of English football. And that wasn't even the highest of highs, as November of 2006, they beat a certain team in the League Cup. Wanna know who that team is? Yeah, Manchester United. That was a significant moment in the club's history, however, this moment in the sun wasn't gonna last too long as by the 2009-10 season their relegation back to the fourth tier of English football was all but confirmed and if the highs were really high the lows were about to get really low as they encounter their first side of financial problems. First signs of trouble came in November of 2009 when the club were hit with a winding up order from the HMRC over unpaid tax bills. So what is the HMRC and what's a winding up order? So basically a winding up order is telling your company to just shut down and liquidate. That's the short and simple form of it. And the HMRC is the one that deals with the tax in UK. That's again the short and simple of it. I need to explain them in detail. Even I don't know the full details of it. So eventually that was settled. However, they were hit with yet another winding up order from the HMRC in February of 2010, which was then adjourned to March and then to April. All the while, their players and staffs are not getting paid at all. It took the PFA to step in and pay the players and staffs their outstanding wages, which means they had their first transfer embargo until they can settle everything off. Eventually, they did. 
and Salten's name was cleared in August of 2010. Roy Martins came to the Echo and said how he was really positive about the future of the club and how, if you look back on it, this would be just a blip in the way. And those words are some of the biggest lies ever told by a human male, as things are about to get worse for Salten United, much worse. But we had to wait a bit. If we had to fast forward to 2020. So the year is 2020, and a lot has changed over the last 10 years, so let's reset the scene a bit. Some dude ate a bat, which means there's a whole global pandemic going on and everybody's stuck at home. Zoom, no, which nobody's heard of, has become a thing. And the sales of masks, toilet paper, and for some reason, Tin foil hats are at an all time high. And Southern United, they're on the brink again. In January 2020, they received yet another winding up order from the HMRC, the third one we've counted, over unpaid wage bills. Which means, come on, give it a guess. Bingo, correct. It's another transfer embargo, the second one we've mentioned. Eventually, Ron Martins did pay off the 140000 owed, and he did promise that this would be the last time and he would fix up, and it would never happen again. And surely at this point, you think Ron Martins has fixed it up, given his reassurances, for me once, shame on me, for me twice, shame on you, or whatever the saying goes. There's no for me thrice. If you for me thrice, the seventh layer of hell is waiting for me. So surely at this point, he's fixed up and everything is fine and then the PFA are paying the players again. The PFA are f***ing paying the players again. And another winding up order from the HMRC, which was adjourned four times until it was settled in October of 2020. This was a worse mess than anything that's come in 2010 and earlier this year. Well, not this year, earlier 2020, you get it. And for the Southern Faithful, if things off the pitch were bad, things on the pitch... It wasn't looking good, bruv. Back-to-back relegations meant that for the first time in 101 years, Southern United are outside the Football League. 101 years ago, World War II wasn't a thing the last time Southern United were not in the first four divisions of English football. That's a long time, and it took one reckless idiot to make all of that happen. The one good thing about the National League is the fact that you there's no transfer window, so you can pretty much sign players whenever you want across the season. That is, unless you're in a transfer embargo. Cause lads, he's f***ing done it again! A winding up order from the HMRC, unpaid player wages, and a transfer embargo. The holy trinity at this point, if you will, is on Salton's head again due to Ron Martin's incompetence, but this time it's a little more serious, as if everything was not paid off by the 1st of March, which was a week ago at the time of recording, Salton United were to go bust. And eventually Ron Martin's did pay off, he took off some loan to pay off the debt, bridged the finance gap as he liked to put it from time to time, and Salton United and their fans lived to fight for another day. But with this many winding up orders, this many unpaid tax bills, this many transfer embargoes, surely the fans are fed up at this point and questions really need to be asked about that buffoon at the top. Ron Martins. One of the biggest objectives when Ron Martins initially bought the club was to move Southend from their current home, Roots Hall, to a smaller stadium called Fawcett's Farm which ironically enough has been delayed due to a lack of information. And eventually they will demolish Roots Hall and build a housing area where it once stood. So it's clear from the beginning, this was just a part of his property business. And as a result, the club have been underfunded massively. How underfunded? You see, the club's main supporters group, Shrimpers Trust, had 
to loan the club £40,000 on top of a GoFundMe they set up to pay the staff. The GoFundMe so far has £21,000 at the time of recording. And PG Side Services, which is the club's main shirt sponsor, had to loan the club 40000 That's about 100000 loaned in from them. And that wasn't the end of it all. Because one former player did approach Ron Martins to buy the club for him. Stan Collymore, who once played for Southend back in 1992, basically emailed Ron Martins offering his assistant, whether it be financial help or even just taking over the club for him. But that came to nothing. At this point, you can't really blame the fans for being worried about their club's future. This is the club they've supported through thick and thin, and they aren't gonna let some hobo just ruin it and made protests against Ron Martins and against his running of the club and some fans who are worried have are preparing to set up a Phoenix club which you can't really blame them at all and yeah sure the debts have been paid off but the fact that you keep getting into this situation again and again and again it's not a good thing and until the fundamentals have been sorted out you're gonna keep getting back into this position because you're just taking loans to pay off debts. The loans, you have to pay back them as well. And eventually it will catch up with you. And I hope for their sake that it doesn't. And before that comes, Ron Martins had leaves the club because that's the only way this scenario changes. This is not light at the end of the tunnel. This is your torchlight, which is out of battery, just glitching and turning on for a few seconds before it becomes pitch black again. And I hope for their sake that there is some sort of light at the end of the tunnel and they can watch and enjoy their club again without having to worry about all this off-field shenanigan or the survival of their club. That's the end of the video. Hope you all enjoyed watching it. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so that you don't miss any of my future uploads. And yeah, this is some this is a video I really enjoyed researching and filming because I didn't really know much about it at the start. I only knew from like the outside and it was really interesting looking at the inside and see what's actually happening. This is the type of stuff I really wanted to do. So yeah, I feel like I did leave a lot of stuff out again, but I did enjoy making this video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope I can spread awareness of what's actually happening at Southend United. And yeah. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care and see ya.